Fog Allen Fieldhouse sits prominently on Naismith Drive on an unseasonably warm New Year's Eve in Lawrence. Kansas fans will fill the Fieldhouse for the Jayhawks' final tune-up before conference play. 2011 has been a breakout time for Thomas Robinson, while veteran guard Tyshawn Taylor leads KU to the end of the calendar year. But will 2012 be another banner year for the Kansas Jayhawks? Welcome to ESPN News coverage of college basketball as the North Dakota Fighting Sioux take on the 18th ranked Kansas Jayhawks from Allen Fieldhouse, historic Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas on this New Year's Eve. Great to have you with us, Mark Dealey, with Miles Simon. You probably know won a national championship with Arizona, but you may not know he won a pro title in the CBA with the Dakota Wizards in North Dakota. But Miles, 2011, the calendar has been up and down for the Jayhawks, which we'll document throughout this telecast. But they did win their seventh consecutive regular season Big 12 title to begin conference play next week. What the Jayhawks, though, need to address before getting to conference? Mark, the biggest problem that they need to shore up is the turnovers. They average 15 turnovers a game. And some of the loose ball handling, loose passes, are things they're not going to be able to get away with in conference play because teams like Baylor and Missouri and Texas, they're going to make you pay. For the North Dakota Fighting Sioux, this is a big deal. A national stage, national television. They're in their fourth and final transition year, becoming full Division I. Well, they'll be in the Big Sky Conference next year. They're very excited to play here at the University of Kansas. Some of it's about the heritage and the opportunity. Once in a lifetime chance for some of these young men to play at Fog Allen Fieldhouse. Well, our one on one matchup for Thomas Robinson of Kansas. He may be asked to do some things defensively today that he has not been asked to do this year. Well, what he'll have to do defensively, he'll have to guard some perimeter guys, the ones, the twos, and the threes, because Kansas is going to switch a lot of the ball screens that North Dakota runs. And Patrick Mitchell, he plays the four spot. He'll match up against Robinson. He'll be a pick and pop guy, can knock down the three point shot with efficiency. Well, Tyshawn Taylor, who is the lone returning starter for the Jayhawks, last couple of games, 14 assists, only three turnovers, but that's definitely been a work in progress. Well, I think the stat to look at also with him is the three point field goal percentage. 53% is a career high for a guy who started basically all four years here as a Jayhawk. But he has to be the guy that takes control of that basketball, gets the ball inside to Robinson, and then work inside and out. Take a look at the lineup for North Dakota. They've got a couple of key starters back. Jamal Webb, who was out in their last game due to a family issue, and also Patrick Mitchell due to concussive symptoms back in the lineup. And for the Jayhawks, Jeff Withy leading the Big 12 in non-conference play in blocks with 35. And you'll notice the Jayhawks wearing the crimson, the red uniforms today with North Dakota in the black uniforms with the green trim. Our referee, Drew Getzel, puts the ball in the air. Brecky and Withy on the jump, and it's Kansas that has the first possession. Long lob down low all the way to Withy, but it's deflected. This time it goes out of bounds and will return to the Jayhawks. Kansas trying to make a quick opening statement here, Miles. Well, Mark, and right off the top, they got away with that. I watched their game against Howard that they played two nights ago. They did the same thing off the tip, but they got away with it against Howard. But there, Tyshawn Taylor, you don't need it. Withy's not that. Wasn't open. One turnover already start the game within 10 seconds. Out front for Withy. Taylor looking down low for Robinson, who came up with the pass around his neck. Back out, though, for Travis Relaford. His pass deflected by Huff. It stays with the Jayhawks with 14 to shoot. Johnson will shoot a three. North Dakota, Jamal Webb, a sophomore from Buffalo, New York. Brings it up the floor for the Fighting Sioux. And you'll see multiple ball screens on each possession for North Dakota. They want to keep the floor spread. Spacing very important for the Fighting Sioux. Webb down the left side of the lane, floats it up. And it was unnecessary. It looked like that ball was going to go in, but Brandon Brecky went up and caused no, the basket interference. Brecky just got a little bit too excited. That ball was going to go in by Webb with the soft touch. You see Withy misses it. That ball was going to tip back into the rim. Brecky has to let that one go. So it stays scoreless just over a minute in. Johnson left wing for Kansas. You'll see Kansas want to get ball reversals two or three times. North Dakota's going to allow it because they play pack line defense. Now Johnson has missed the first two 
shot attempts, both from three-point land. Johnson's really become strictly almost a jump shooter this year. More than half of his attempts are from the three-point line. When I saw him in high school out of Cheyenne High School in Las Vegas, Over he was more of, a, more of a dribble drive, attack guy. Talking to Coach Self this morning, he says he wants Elijah to get back to that attack the rim. He's only shot nine free throws. That's Brian Jones, the head coach for North Dakota in his sixth season. Coached under Steve Alford. In fact, North Dakota will be visiting Steve Alford's New Mexico team down at the pit early in the 2012 year. Taylor gives it up. Relaford jump stop in the lane, then loses it, knocked away by Mitchell. It stays with Kansas with 19 on the shot clock. No score, 18-13 left. One of the things Brian Jones, the head coach of North Dakota, told us earlier today is, hey, we need to get to the first timeout without getting blown out early. Yeah, it has to be a tight game. He said he wanted it to be 7-6 to six and not 14. Relaford shoots a three. That's off the back rim. Offensive rebound. Robinson. Relaford. Foul. Mark, so far, North Dakota's pack line defense is doing exactly its job, what it's meant to do. Make you shoot contested jump shots. Johnson with two jumpers. Relaford with a jumper. Luckily, Thomas Robinson kept that ball alive on the offensive glass. The redshirt junior Relaford from Kansas City at Bishop E.H. High School is 69% free throw shooter, short with the first. And the Jayhawks who missed their first three field goal attempts. So Relaford missed from the line. Look at the last four games of the Jayhawks. They have struggled from the line, shooting 70% overall from the line on the year. Another miss with the had it for a moment. Now out with it comes Troy Huff from North Dakota. And off the web. And here's what we talked about. Robinson switching on to the point guard. They're going to switch one through four on all ball screens. So Robinson is going to have some mismatch and really have to get in a stance and guard guards. Mitchell sets a screen, as does Wilbur. Webb's pass deflected, intercepted. Kansas has numbers. Taylor, from a tough angle, misses. Relaford had it for a moment, but knocked free, and here's Webb in North Dakota. Skipped over to Aaron Anderson. Lean in, Webb. Well off, and then Relaford fouled after collecting the rebound. Whippy's is such a great shot blocker, excellent timing. Doesn't foul when he goes up to block there. He didn't get the block, but he... But he altered, he, uh, he altered Webb's shot so much that Webb shot the air ball. Connor Tehan, their number two for Kansas, checks in. Jordan Allard in for the fighting Sue. You see Kansas has missed their first five from the field. And they missed their first two free throws. Scoreless over three minutes in in Lawrence. Here's Tehan. He's going to shoot a three. Rebound on the offside. Huff had it. Then he collided with Withy, and it goes out of bounds, and will be North Dakota basketball. Troy Huff, one of the best athletes on this North Dakota roster. I love that he's digging back in as a guard, not releasing, staying in the rebound. That's Huff, a 6'4", 175-pound sophomore. He's from Milwaukee. He's a couple of 20-point games this year, does Huff. Anderson. Mitchell back to Anderson. Three and a half minutes into this game. Scoreless. Mitchell trying to change that. He's been their best long-range shooter, but he's off the right side. Then as Kansas outlets Johnson. Almost had a mishap at midcourt. Robinson back to Johnson. Johnson needs to attack, try to get in the paint. He could have turned the corner there. Just not looking to be aggressive. Taylor stumbles and travels. Bill Self in his ninth season here in Lawrence. And this team comes in nine and three. Right now having problems scoring. And North Dakota, despite four early turnovers, four minutes into the game, scoreless. Well, I think North Dakota, they're happy with that. They've done a good job defensively. They probably should be in the lead besides the offensive goaltending. And, and Aller banks it in. 
That's a three. The Fighting Sioux score first in Lawrence. And sometimes for a team that hasn't played in an atmosphere like this, that's a little bit of nerves on that shot. And with authority, Robinson on the lob for Kansas's first bucket. Nice job on that roll action, perfectly delivered lob pass. So the Jayhawks missed their first five field goals, hit on their sixth driving layup, missed by Troy Huck, though. Look at how deep Taylor catches the outlet. That's excellent for a point guard. Catches it nearly half court to start the break. Almost a replay, but set up from the opposite side. Another jam for Thomas Robinson, and Kansas takes their first lead. Deflected, last touch by Kansas, but we come to a timeout with 14.50 to go. KU had a big zero going for their first five field goals, but number zero gets them on the scoreboard with a couple of dunks. Monmouth, North Carolina at three, followed by Penn Duke, tomorrow on ESPNU. Kansas missed their first five field goals. They made their last two, though, Miles, shall we say, high percentage shots with the dunks. Absolutely. They've got to get their get the ball to the workhorse as we go inside the play here. You're going to see a nice screen and then a slip. You see Tyshawn Taylor come off tight. One dribble, draws it, frees it right there. Allard is Thomas Robinson's mad, draws the help, dishes as Robinson rolls. Perfectly executed on that roll, on that screen and roll opportunity away from the basketball. Well, as we end this 2011 calendar year, for the Jayhawks, it's been an up-and-down one. And for the Jayhawks' year in review, it began really tragically January 21st when Thomas Robinson's mother, Lisa, died suddenly due to natural causes in his hometown of Washington, D.C. Well, Mark, I was able to talk to Thomas about a little bit about that yesterday and asked him if his perspective on maybe life and basketball has changed, and he said it definitely has. He doesn't take any days for granted anymore. Really tries to live each day to the fullest. Shot clock is at one, and Allard unable to get it off before the shot clock expired. Well, if you're Coach Brian Jones, you don't like that out of a timeout. You have to know the shot clock, that it was down low. Get the shot off. You need some talk out there by Anderson, the point guard. But sometimes in an atmosphere like this where it gets a little bit loud, you get a little bit confused on what's happening. Five North Dakota turnovers. Robinson to the right block, doubled. One dribble and passes out, and a three from Connor Tehan. Guy who's really been their best three-point shooter this year. Mark, but the best thing about that play is Thomas Robinson's patience in the post. He knows that the double team is coming, waited for it to come, drew it, kicked it out to the best shooter on the team. But more on Thomas Robinson, when we talked with Bill Self earlier today, he, he told us, he said, hey, you've got to keep in mind the time of year it is coming up on the year anniversary of Thomas losing his mother. That one going in for the Fighting Sioux. The ball was on the cylinder. Bill Self basically saying, hey, he's He's a young kid. He's still got a lot going on in his head, dealing with a lot of things. Well, remember, he didn't only lose his mother. He lost both of his grandparents all within a month, a month time last year. And he has a young sister who's now living with the biological father back in Washington, D.C. And at the time, it was thought maybe the young sister who was with his mom was going to come live with him in Lawrence. He has missed three. Keeps it a two-point Kansas lead. This is Goodman in the game. Spencer Goodman deflected into the backcourt, brings it back across. Steps through the double, the trap. Allard, Goodman. Never found rim. Long outlet from Robinson feeds Taylor. He's got Young on the other side. Tough angle shot, and Taylor gets it to go and one. Mark, two great things on that play. The long outlet by Thomas Robinson, and then the composure by Taylor. He gave a look to Kevin Young first, saw that he wasn't open for the lob, then drives, uses that strength. He has a great body. Takes the contact, going to the line for and one, Tyshawn Taylor. 
Tyshawn has a knack, Miles, for making those, those tough shots, those tough angle shots contorted going to the rim. Tyshawn Taylor, basically a four-year four year starter. Coming into this season shows how young the Kansas Jayhawks squad is. He had played more minutes than the rest of the roster combined in their careers. We forget how young Kansas really is as far as playing experience. Wilmer, the hook in the lane. Yeah, they lost Reed, they lost Morningstar, and obviously the, the uh, Morris twins to the NBA. Most guys on this roster have now doubled or tripled their minutes per game average. Bouncing around, tipped by Withy, off the floor, rebounded by Jamal Webb of North Dakota. Numbers against him, now he swings it around left side. Josh Schuler in the lane, floats it up short. Rebound, Tehan, outlet, Taylor. Taylor reverses, scores, and is fouled. And again, Taylor, the degree of difficulty, not quite as high as the shot he made previously, but did a nice job reversing this one. Mark, but defense leaving the offense. Withy affects the shot. Tehan with his head up on the rebound, and then Tyshawn Taylor with the sweet reverse oh. takes the contact again. Schuler has to do a better job of not letting Taylor get that side up on the finish. Jayhawks have missed their first three free throws of the game. That changes what Taylor's make to complete the three-point play. And give Kansas a 12-5 lead. Excuse me, that was Goodman on the foul, not Schuler. Jayhawks after the made free throw, pick up full court. Nadir Thorpe has checked into the game. Also, Justin Wesley in for the Jayhawks. Webb. Tipped. Kept alive by Mitchell for North Dakota. Mitch Wilmer waits and got really committed. And the foul on Jeff Withy. Timeout. 11.57 to play in this first half. In Lawrence, a six-point lead for the Jayhawks. It's the final stop in Case Keenum's record-setting collegiate career as the all-time passing leader is put to the test by one of the country's toughest Ds. Capital One Bowl Week continues Monday at noon with Houston versus Penn State in the Ticket City Bowl on ESPNU. Jayhawks have the seven-point lead with 11.57 to play in this first half. Happy New Year to you from Lawrence, Kansas. There's actually some folks here wearing shorts today. It's 60-plus degrees outside, very unseasonable. Tomorrow, New Year's Day, ESPNU has another full day of college hoops. First at 1 Eastern, Villanova visits 13th-ranked Marquette at 3 Eastern, Harrison Barnes and 6th-ranked North Carolina. Post Monmouth and finally at 5 Eastern, Penn meets Seth Curry and 5th-ranked Duke. The home court of college hoops on ESPNU, ESPN3, and also streaming live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. I love these, love both of these guys, Kendall Marshall and Austin Rivers, lead their teams in different ways. Austin Rivers, obviously, more of a scoring guard, but he's handling the point guard duties, he's dribbling the ball well enough. But Kendall Marshall, he leads a one-man pass break sometimes with his ability to throw the ball 60 feet, pinpoint passes to guys like Zeller, Barnes, Henson running the floor. Two years resolution, Kansas. And their fans would like an eighth consecutive regular season Big 12 crown. They will be challenged, no question, Bill Self's team. Baylor looking very good, as is Missouri, though the Tigers got a bit of a scare from Old Dominion last night here on ESPNU. They definitely will be challenged. I, I got to do Baylor versus West Virginia last week. And Perry Jones, who's obviously their star player, Big 12 player of the year, candidate, All-American. Didn't have the greatest game, but that's what I loved about Baylor. They were able to, able to pull out a tight one in overtime. Pierre Jackson right now, the difference in that team, hit a game-tying three against West Virginia to send it to overtime. He's a junior college All-American. Missouri obviously has played very tough. Denman, Pressy Brothers. Jordan Allard. Wilmer, who hits one of two from the line, departs. Jordan Allard, who had scored all the North Dakota points prior to that, comes back in for the fighting Sioux. 12-6 Kansas, we're under the 12-minute mark. And away from the basketball. We have a foul against North Dakota down low. Allard matched up with Robinson. Allard picks up his first. 
We're now at a North Dakota kid from Fargo at the Fargo South High School. Tehan, no shot. We have an offensive foul, no basket, and it's North Dakota ball. Moving pick on Justin Wesley there as Tehan was coming off tight. Wesley just threw that hip out there and get charged for the foul. So the fighting Sue will inbound. Start and Tehan picking up full court. Ball web. Sharp defending. There's Troy Huff. North Dakota, if they are going to get it going offensively, Huff would be a good place to begin for them. Yeah, he's a guy that has to get some touches, some penetration into the paint. Not the best three-point shooter, but very athletic. And just a 17% three-point shooter. He's been their leading scorer coming in at 14 points a game. Shot clock down to three. Huff, scoop, put back, rolling around and would not go in for Allard. Another opportunity for the Fighting Sioux won't fall. Those have to drop three missed layups on one possession for the Fighting Sioux. If you want to pull off the upset, those have to go down for you. Tehan. It was touched by Webb, so it stays with the Jayhawks. Withy will come back for Kansas, replacing Wesley. And number zero for North Dakota, you see Aaron Anderson. Check back in for North Dakota. There's Wesley. Sophomore out of Fort Worth, Texas. Had a season high. Six points the other night against Howard. Kansas absolutely demolished the Bison. 89-34. Howard only scored 13 points in the first half. The second straight game, Kansas has allowed only 13 points in the first half. With the lob finishes. Third lob of the half for the Jayhawks, but that's what you like to see Elijah Johnson do. Get in the paint, create for himself or others. Mitchell had to reach back for that pass, but lays it in and scores for North Dakota. I want to see Kansas continue to get that ball inside the paint, let Robinson and Whitney do some work down there. Robinson dribbles out of the double. Now looking to attack Allard defensively again, but out to Tharp. Midway through this first half, 14-8 Kansas and a steal there for Jordan Allard of the Fighting Sioux. And Tyshawn Taylor up off the bench after that turnover. Tharp, he, he bore the wrath of Bill Self in practice yesterday. He had to touch every step in Fall Gallon Fieldhouse as he was turning the ball over, not sharp on executing the plays in practice yesterday. That misses the shot from long range. I think that's Bill Self's favorite <laughs> punitive decree in practice. You upset him. Touch every step here at Allen Fieldhouse. Johnson. Tharp from 18. In and out. Tharp known as a good shooter in his high school days in Massachusetts. And having trouble scoring with the Jayhawks. So we review the calendar year for the Jayhawks. We mentioned a day prior to January 22nd, Thomas Robinson lost his mother and the Jayhawks playing with heavy hearts saw their 69 game home winning streak end in a loss to the Longhorns. And Jacobin Brown had a huge game for the Longhorns that day really lit up the Jayhawks. have a recent loss to Davidson, but that did not occur here at Allen Fieldhouse. It did occur at the Sprint Center in nearby Kansas City. But losses are very rare for the Jayhawks here at Allen Fieldhouse. It's Wilmer with the right hand. Rebound by Robinson. His quick outlet for Taylor, who has Whitney on the run with him, floats it up short. I really like how North Dakota's playing. I know they're, they're down six points. It's right where they want to be, low scoring. They're not allowing Kansas to get out in transition too much. They're not getting the shots to fall, but they've been really patient on offense, which is something Coach Jones really emphasized. Aaron Anderson called for the carry. Eight thirty-one left in this first half. 14-8 
Kansas, the third ever meeting between these schools. North Dakota, longtime Division II team, played here at Allen Fieldhouse in 2000, and then the Jayhawks actually went to Grand Forks the following year. And they went back there because Jeff Boshi, former Jayhawk great, is a North Dakota native. And back over to North Dakota. Well, if your favorite college team had a New Year's resolution for the upcoming year, what would it be? You can join the discussion on Twitter at ESPNU. We'll go over some resolutions, I'm sure, before this telecast is through from Lawrence. Can't resist that on New Year's Eve. 11 total turnovers, six from the visitors. Right now, I don't like the body language of the Jayhawk team. Nobody's talking out there on defense. The whole, the whole arena is basically silent right now. Someone needs to pick up the, their energy level and should start with Taylor and Robinson, the two leaders out there. Johnson, a deep three. Robinson keeps it alive and gets fouled down low. And we see another three attempt from Johnson off the mark. 7.42 to play in the first half. 14-8 Jayhawks. Wednesday, it's an ESPNU Top 25 showdown as the Golden Eagles take on Jason Clark and the Hoyas at 7. Then at 9, Texas battles Iowa State in their Big 12 openers. Mark at Georgetown at 7, followed by Texas Iowa State at 9. Wednesday on ESPNU. Taylor Martinez powers the Husker offense against Steve Spurrier's bruising South Carolina D. Capital One Bowl Week culminates Monday with Nebraska versus South Carolina in the Capital One Bowl at 1 Eastern on ESPN. College football lives here. Happy New Year from Lawrence, and Monday ESPNU has a full day of college football. It starts at 10 a.m. Eastern with College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, live from the Rose Bowl, and then at 11 a.m. Eastern, get updates from all the day's bowl games on College Football Whip Around. Noon Eastern, Case Keenum, his final game, number 19, Houston, taking on 22nd-ranked Penn State in the Ticket City Bowl in Dallas. The career numbers on Case Keenum, who unfortunately bitten by the injury bug in his collegiate career, but has put up historic numbers at the quarterback position. Himself in the year of Nadir Farm. I don't think he's going to have to touch all the steps during this game. <laughs> maybe, Miles, but maybe after the game. Shoot two. But Bill Self, he, he's traditionally hard on his point guards. It's a lot of teaching. This is a young man that next year is going to have to probably step into that starting role at the point guard spot when Tyshawn Taylor graduates. So he's preparing him. Even Tyshawn Taylor talking to me yesterday after practice says he helps him, he helps Nadir a lot, talking to him, telling him what Coach Self expects on a daily basis, trying to help him run this offense. Robinson makes one of two from the line, so the Jayhawks just two of six from the strike to begin this game. What, what I don't like about the Jayhawks offensively right now, 16 field goal attempts, eight of them have been threes. We have an All-American down low. Get that man some touches down low. Let him operate inside the paint first. Now the bad pass by Wilmer results in a North Dakota turnover. Kansas missed their first five from the field, but they're up to 40% shooting. North Dakota really hasn't found their stroke yet. Relaford finding his, knocking down a three. We'll see now Kansas has played down to North Dakota. They go small with Relaford at the four, which allows Robinson more room on the, on the inside to operate. Back cut, Huff shooting over Robinson and scores. Nice play by the Fighting Sioux. Excellent back cut by Huff and the, and the great finish over Thomas Robinson. Taylor. Tyshawn Taylor seems to have his stroke today. Jay Hawks up the lead to 10. Huff threads a pass down low to Mitchell who got trapped underneath the basket trying to pass back out. Knocked out of bounds by the Jay Hawks. Timeout called North Dakota. That's Patrick Mitchell. Timeout. And the timeout 
32nd timeout called by North Dakota. Well, the best way to relieve pressure, freeze it right there, is the use of the back cut. Relaford is overextended on defense. We on the deny. Go ahead and roll it. Mitchell, great job of back cutting. Huff with the excellent setup and then the touch shot, and he avoid, uses his athleticism to avoid the charge. And throughout this telecast, we've been noting the Jayhawks calendar year 2011 in review. And our third notation comes from March 5th when the Tigers won at Missouri and clinched their seventh straight Big 12 title. Preseason last year, they were picked third, won their seventh consecutive. This year, they are the preseason favorite, but as Miles and I have talked about, Baylor and Missouri look to be right there. And, and there we see Connor Tehan, who is loaded with hardware. He's a fifth-year senior, but he has five rings, four Big 12 titles and a national title ring. A young man who was an invited walk-on, now been on scholarship the last two years, a Kansas native. Fans just love them here in Jayhawk land. And the Kansas City suburb of Leewood went to high school on the Missouri side of the Rockers. T. Hand, Robinson. The jumper. Good, Johnson. All of his field goal attempts, the three previous in this game had been threes and he'd missed all three. Steps up a little bit and hits the two there. Well, Mark, he did a great job of flashing from the weak side once Thomas Robinson got doubled. And he caught that ball right in rhythm, got squared up to knock it down. Relaford called for the grab. We've talked about Elijah Johnson already today, and you mentioned the fact you had seen him earlier in his playing career where he was a better penetrator. And what really sticks out for Johnson, he's, he's averaging 30 minutes a game. He has attempted only nine free throws this year. And that's a lack of aggressiveness. This was a young man when I was coaching at Arizona that we were very high on and we were recruiting as a staff there. And he's a great athlete. He was a penetrator getting to the rim. He wasn't as much of a jump shooter as he is now. But it's something that's in his game and Coach Self wants to see him utilize more is getting to the basket. Schuler with the basket for North Dakota and then Frankie defending for the fighting Sioux. It's going to go against Huff. With Thomas Robinson at the line, where he is a 69% free throw shooter. Averaging a double double, 17 points, 11 rebounds. In fact, had a double double in each of the first six games of the season before that streak fell against South Florida. And they went for 14 points and eight rebounds. It's interesting to hear Bill Self talk about Thomas Robinson, who basically says, hey, Thomas is still a developing scorer. Yeah, he feels that Robinson's motor could be even higher than it is now. Feels that he should probably be at about 22 points and 13 rebounds a game is the numbers he told us this morning. But he's still working, still working on that post game, still extending his range. He's extended out to about 15 or 17 feet this season. The Hawks have opened up an 11 point lead as we near the five and a half minute mark. The jumper by Mitchell missed. Mitchell's a guy who's a very good outside shooter for the fighting Sioux. Not so far today, however. Quick pass, touched back to Tehan. Johnson penetrated, kicks it out for the Taylor three. Well, we did see Johnson penetrate there. The defense collapsed on him. Well, I love it. He gets into the gap between the two defenders. Draws the ball side defender, delivers a perfect pass for the three-point shot. North Dakota will use their second time out of the half. Elijah Johnson, he'll play playmaker on this play. Great ball reversal. He drives it right away, draws the two defenders there. You never want to leave a ball side shooter. But Tyshawn Taylor, one of the most improved three-point shooters in the country at 53%, knocks down the wide open jay. Well, Capital One Bowl Week concludes Monday with four games at noon Eastern on ESPNU. Number 19, Houston meets number 22, Penn State, in the Ticket City Bowl in Dallas. Then at 1 Eastern, ABC, Michigan State clashes with 16th ranked Georgia at the Outback Bowl. Also at 1 Eastern on ESPN, 20th ranked Nebraska faces number 9, South Carolina, in the Capital One Bowl. And at 1 Eastern on ESPN2, Ohio State faces Florida, a rematch of the 2007 BCS title game at the TaxSlayer.com. Gator Bowl.
Fighting two out of their timeout. Web dribble. You see they space the floor now. They want to get some pick and roll action. Maybe get Mitchell in a pop situation to try to knock down a three-point shot, get himself back in this ball game. Shot clock runs down to 12. Webb nearly picked by Relaford. Seven to shoot. Webb looking, finds the shooter up and good. Spencer Goodman. Goodman's a guy who can add a lot to this team. Played his first game of the year against Western Illinois earlier this week. Had a torn labrum last season, missed the whole year. And then had a relapse right before the season started this year. In the lane, Robinson running into Webb in the foul. Well, Webb does a good job of being able to control that basketball. Goodman with a beautiful left-handed stroke. Great rotation on his shot. Holds that follow-through, knocks down the three to get North Dakota back within 11. Fighting two ball. Still with four minutes to play in this first half. New Year's Eve and Lawrence Tehan comes all the way out to midcourt and fouls Anderson to the bump. First on Tehan. And I know people probably say, why did Tehan foul there? But you have to remember, Tehan's a guard, so he's not used to having to show on on-ball screens. He's usually the guy that's guarding the guy dribbling the basketball. Anderson finds a crease and lays it in. Aaron Anderson is listed at 5'10", 145 pounds, weaved his way through to the rim. Well, I like the quickness, being able to turn the corner. And then the pass fake, one of the most underutilized tools in basketball, pass fakes and shot fakes, freezes the defender, and he's able to finish at the rim. Able to turn the corner, no help. Tyson Taylor doesn't rotate over. Tehan is no shot blocker in there, and Aaron Anderson, the diminu diminutive guard at 5'10", with the finish. Well, another look at our Jayhawks calendar year, 2011 in review. March 27th, they were the number one seed, but beaten by the 11th seed, Virginia Commonwealth in San Antonio in the Elite Eight that sent the Rams to the Final Four instead of the Jayhawks. And remember, VCU had to win five games yeah, they, to get to the final four. They were in that first round, what's now the first round, and they played USC and beat them. Shaka Smart. They went from the first four to the final four. Right. Johnson a three. Got it to go in. I'm okay with that play right there on that shot because Thomas Robinson got a touch of the ball, drew the defenders, and then Elijah Johnson had his feet set and knocked it down. Tian commits his second foul, knocking Webb to the court. A timeout with 3.29 to go in half number one. And A. Shroff here in the Sports Center U studio. Coming up at halftime, we'll show you how Kentucky took care of Louisville in a battle of top five teams. It was a big weekend for the nation's top freshmen at Texas A&M with a big win on the gridiron, playing with heavy hearts. All that at halftime. At East, thank you so much. 329 left in the first half. And Lawrence Thomas Robinson, two of two from the field, two of four from the line, was six points and seven rebounds. And he's just mentioning the bluegrass battle, won by Kentucky. How about Iowa winning at Wisconsin? That one does shock me. Yeah, unbelievable win to go in to the Kohl Center and get that victory on the road for the Hawkeyes. First time Bo Ryan, Wisconsin head coach, has ever lost at home to the Iowa Hawkeyes. Aaron Anderson dribbles for the fighting suit. Anderson gave a look to Huff, who made the back cut, but Jordan Judeman was playing it well defensively, but in the lane they score. Coach Huff. Yeah, Coach Jones told us that there he's their most talented player. There he gets to the basket, finishes a tough layup. Lob and Robinson for the third time in this game slams one down. That's a tough play to defend. It's a weak side to screen away, and then Ty Tyshawn Taylor comes off so tight, the defender has to help. 
Robinson with a nice roll and uses athleticism. Well, Huff gave a nice look to Webb in the corner, but then commits the offensive foul in the lane. Well, here's the weak side screen. We freeze it right there. Wilmer has to make a decision. Do I go help on Tyshawn Taylor? He gets caught in the middle, no man's land, and then that's dunk time for Thomas Robinson. Taylor brings it ahead for the Jayhawks. Jordan Juniman. Robinson, ball fake, makes a spin move, shoots from 15. Juniman, the rebound, back out to Thomas Robinson, who shoots from 16 and scores. But kept alive by Jordan Juniman, the senior <laughs> walk-on from Hayes, Kansas. Sometimes you just need a spark, and it can come from different areas, different people. Jordan Juniman getting the crowd on their feet. It was interesting today, earlier, Jordan Juniman came up to us during the shoot-around, looked at Miles and said, hey, <laughs> you knocked out one of my favorite KU teams in 97. He said, I'm surprised they let you in the building. I said, I do have to work sometimes. Left side three off from Goodman, and he goes over to Kansas. But I think Juniman is a guy that I talked about the energy level. I didn't like, you know, the body language of this Kansas team about seven or eight minutes ago. But Juniman, he's going to come in, excite you, play hard, get some offensive rebounds, guard, and you see he sparked a little bit of enthusiasm in the squad right away. It definitely brought some energy on the floor for the Jayhawks. Also told us earlier today, wouldn't mind getting into the television side of things when he has finished up back again as well. Robinson hits the front end of the one and one. Our Kansas year in review continuing on April 7th with the Morris Twins hired an agent and declared for the NBA draft. So the new Marcus and Mark Keith were not coming back. Of course, both wound up being first round picks. Mark, uh, Mark Keith to Phoenix, 13th overall, and Marcus to Houston, 14th overall. Well, I think they're still feeling the effects of that, but in a positive way because Thomas Robinson got to practice against the Morris Twins every day, and that really helped his game going against those guys and seeing the versatility that they have and trying to stop them in practice. Well, Allard, who hit his first three of the season earlier in this half, misses the three-point range. Jayhawks keep it alive. A touch by Robinson, a spin move to the baseline, pulls up, missed the jumper, but then Rallaford missing on the putback attempt. Just over a minute to play in this first half. Webb is a guy that needs to get going. He's one of their best scorers, had 21 two games ago against Sacramento State. Hasn't been as, ag as aggressive in the first half. Grabbed by Juniman. 17 foul against the Jayhawks. So it'll put Webb at the line for North Dakota. Jamal Webb, who they have back in the lineup, he missed their last game to attend a family funeral. One and one. And it looks like we have a lane violation called against the Jayhawks. Well, we'll get another opportunity. Mark, we talked about this North Dakota team earlier on. They're in their transition phase from Division II to Division I. They're in their fourth and final year. They're joining the Big Sky next year, which Coach Brian Jones is very excited about. They're in the Great West Conference right now. Last year, they, they won the Great West Conference conference tournament on a three-point shot at the buzzer, played in the College Insider, which is big for this program to go to the postseason, now getting on national TV, playing against the Jayhawks. Really a program builder. And, and I spent some time in North Dakota playing in the CBA. You know, first thing people normally think of is obviously the cold, but I think of the great people that live in, live in the state of North Dakota, some of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. Beautiful countryside. My former coach, Lute Olsen, was born in Mayville, North Dakota. But I think it's something Coach Coach Jones can build on recruiting 
recruiting building uh, building in their recruiting. North Dakota University founded in 1883 about 14,000 students are in the Great West Conference but as Miles said heading to the Big Sky Great West Conference Commissioner Ed Brom here today for this game three from the right corner off from Johnson and Robinson with the rebound but a North Dakota foul Spencer Goodman called for a push and that would put Relaford at the free throw line for Kansas. Shooting two is Travis Relaford. If the Relaford name sounds familiar, he has a younger brother, Trevor, who's the starting point guard at Alabama, having an excellent year. He's a sophomore. He's a sophomore there. Both of the guys, Kansas City natives. But Travis here. Was in a walking boot yesterday, has a strain in his foot, couldn't go through the whole practice. Something they're just trying to monitor and make sure that it doesn't get worse. This is the second free throw. Robinson, though, nearly able to tip that miss in. And it's just 5 of 12 from the line. The 13 second difference between the shot clock and game clock. Layup missed by Webb. It remains with North Dakota. And the shot clock goes off. Well, again, another missed layup. That's about the fifth or sixth point blank miss by the Fighting Sioux. This is a team that hasn't won a road game yet this year. Only added 61 points a game on the road, 78 at home. But those are the opportunities that have to fall. Coach, Coach Jones mentioned to us today they average 11 missed layups per game on the road. So number 22, Merv Lindsay, come in for Kansas. He had his best day as a Jay Hawker last game against Howard with nine points. Three missed by Mitchell, and now Kansas can hold it for the final shot. Lindsay, by the way, a true freshman from California. Those nine points for him the other night against Howard, his first points as a Jay Hawk. You'll see Tyson Taylor go flat and then flare screens on the wing. Taylor floats it in. From beyond midcourt, short and right from Aaron Anderson. But the Jayhawks, after a slow beginning, have the lead, 37-21. Thomas Robinson, a double-double in that first half. But it was Taylor who had some acrobatic shots. Now let's go to the studio with Anish Shroff and Dino Gaudio. Happy New Year from Lawrence, Kansas. We're on this New Year's Eve. We're ready to start the second half with KU leading North Dakota by 16. Glad you could spend part of your New Year's Eve with us. Mark Neely with Miles Simon. Miles, KU got off to a bit of a sluggish start, missed their first five field goals, but their two leaders really seem to take precedence late in the half. Well, really, Robinson got it going early. He got a couple lob dunks. They were really sharing the basketball. Uh, very well and then Tyshawn Taylor took over later in the half got some penetration really got out in transition and they were the two guys that sparked the Jayhawks to this early to this lead and those two things very pronounced as you mentioned with the penetration by Taylor well I like the fact that they're getting to the basket getting two feet in the paint sharing the basketball there you see Elijah Johnson who's been a spot up shooter mostly this year with the driving dish and then Thomas Robinson doing work in the post Patience draws the double team, kicks out the T hand for the knockdown, and then again, drawing all the attention, the crowd, players being patient, waiting for him. Thomas Robinson setting up his teammates for open shots out of the post. Look at the first half numbers. Kansas did not shoot well early, but winds up close to 50%. North Dakota just 30% in the free throws. KU just 5 of 12. Well, Mark, the one stat that you and I noticed assist at the half, the assist. That's 12 assists on 14 baskets. Bill Self will be very happy with that. He, felt, he feels his basketball team is very unselfish, and they're demonstrating that today. Kansas in the crimson, the red. North Dakota in the black with the green trim. Fighting Sue the basketball to begin the half, but immediately an issue with the shot clock, which has not begun. Need to take four seconds off that. And they do. So we'll try it again as Duke Edsel, our referee, bounces the ball to Aaron Anderson. It's it into Webb. 
North Dakota, the fighting Sioux. Webb and Huff are the two guys that need to get going for the fighting Sioux. Webb went over five in the first half. He's capable of penetrating the lane and finishing. Brecky shooting over Robinson, too strong off the glass. Looked like Relaford was going to pick up the rebound, but Robinson took it away from him, and Robinson gives him a little smile as they go up the floor. And mark a change in the lineup for Kansas. Tehan gets to start with on the bench, playing down, playing small, making Robinson the only post threat. Robinson passes out of the double team. Taylor shoots a three. Brecky getting up over Tehan for the rebound. He makes a move to the basket, but Anderson continued the dribble and now off for Webb. The low entry pass stolen by Robinson. He uses the dribble into the front court and then lost it in the lane, but Relaford comes up with it <laughs> and scores. Well, good job on the defensive end by Thomas Robinson, but he just can't get control of the basketball from the start. Anderson comes in and harasses from the back. Webb gets his hand on it, but you love the fact that Relaford doesn't give up on the play, continues to pursue and trail behind Robinson, and he picks up the garbage with the finish. Took Robinson a moment to get up, but was helped up. It seems to be okay. I think the defender may have rolled over top of his foot. He ties the shoe. Ready for Relaford at the line, looking to complete the three-point play. Nineteen point lead for Kansas here early in the second half. Webb banks it in. Nice shot by Webb. Good job of change of pace dribble on that high ball screen. And good touch off the glass. Johnson lobbed down low. Robinson, Ricky trying to push him off the block. Johnson a three. He hits that one from out front. He missed his first three three-point attempts of the game. Now he has hit his last two. Allard. We saw both Allard and Webb uncomfortable a little bit shooting the long jump shot, but they worked a two-man game to perfection on the roll. Tian defended by Huff, but last touch by North Dakota's Troy Huff. Huff had seven consecutive double-figure scoring games until North Dakota's last game that they played. Point so far. Taylor down the lane. <laughs> Ricky was going to stuff it, then some contact. The shot still went in, and he's fouled. That's about the fourth or fifth time this weak side action. Just a screen away, a roll by Relaford. The defender can't decide where to help at. You remember in the first half, Allard stepped into no man's land and then got dunked on on the backside by Thomas Robinson. This time he doesn't help, and Tyshawn Taylor using the athleticism getting to the rim and finishing. Taylor came in averaging 15 points per game, seventh best in the Big 12, and he's at 15 points after that free throw. Remember Tyshawn Taylor, he's, he's a winner. He won a national championship in high school at St. Anthony's. Making a play there on the defensive end now. He's a leader. Three missed by Johnson. Relaford keeping it alive. Taylor finds an open counter T hand, but no shot. He went crashing into the defender, Wilmer, in the offensive foul against Kansas. But more on Taylor, I think he's the key cog for this team. If he plays under control, doesn't turn the basketball over, can score. We mentioned earlier, he didn't come in as a point guard. It's something that he's had to develop into. Watching a lot of tape on himself. Said he loves to watch Russell, West Russell Westbrook, Derrick Rose, Rajon Rondo are his favorite guys to watch, who he has kind of similar body styles and games to. One thing you certainly can't question about Taylor is his recuperation ability. He had knee surgery on 
December 11th. Didn't miss a game. Came back on the 19th and started against Davidson. Early in the second half on this New Year's Eve in Lawrence, it's 46-25 KU. Marquette Georgetown at 7 and Texas Iowa State at 9. Wednesday on ESPNU. Happy New Year from Fog Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas. Jayhawks head North Dakota, rounding out this 2011 calendar year. But tomorrow afternoon, ESPNU has a full day of college hoops. 13th ranked Marquette looks to bounce back from an atrocious shooting game against Vandy. They take on Villanova, 3 Eastern, North Carolina, Monmouth, and at 5 Eastern, Penn meets Seth Curry in 5th ranked Duke. So much to do. A New Year's Day tomorrow. So much to watch. Bandy zoned Marquette. They really had trouble putting that ball in the hole from the outside. Took away all dribble penetration, essentially, and dominated that game from the start. Aggressive defense by Taylor, but Tyshawn whistled for the foul. Second on Taylor, and the second team foul of the half against the Jayhawks. Sets the screen. Webb dribbling. Off with the shot. Robinson's long outlet. Johnson foul underneath by Mitch Wilmer. We've seen a couple of long outlet passes from Thomas Robinson in this game. Well, well their, guards run, their guards really run and they release early. Thomas Robinson controlling the glass. But I love that he has his head up. And he's not just looking for Tyshawn Taylor. He's found Tehan, he's found Taylor, now he's found Elijah Johnson streaking down the floor. But he delivers the pass right on the money. Johnson at his first trip to the line today, misses. That was only his 10th free throw attempt of the season for Johnson as Wilmer takes a seat with four personals. A two for Elijah Johnson. Forty-seven twenty-five, eighteenth ranked Kansas leading on their home floor. Kansas done a good job of defending this pick and roll. Not too many easy looks for the fighting Sioux off of it. Huff and Webb need to continue to try to get in the lane and free up the three-point shooters. Well, North Dakota had nine different scores in the first half. But Miles, only one of those nine made more than one field goal. Here's the bucket for Schuler. Schuler, who was a starter last year, really has swapped spots with Anderson, who's now the starter this year. Robinson bumps into Brecky, turns, and the baby hook goes in. That's the exact move. He worked on yesterday in practice with Coach Danny Manning, one of the best post development coaches in the country, giving the pass fake, freezing the defense, and then going to the jump rope. Relaford looking as Robinson with him. The one hand jam. Well, you could see the eye contact, Miles, as they were headed up the floor, that something big was about to happen. Well, you knew it was coming. No, not too many guys in the country can jump with Thomas Robinson as long as the pass is anywhere near the rim. It's going to go down Schuler with another three-point bucket, but North Dakota needs to start putting some stops together back-to-back. -to -back. back to a 19-point lead. Schuler a seven, but there's Robinson. That's Robinson's first made three in his career. He had only attempted one three all season, which you can deduce was a miss. Watch out. Let's see how Allard's going to play it. Taylor taking it all the way this time and is fouled by Jordan Allard. Well, the first ever made three by Robinson, but it was preceded by this. Thomas Robinson getting it up, throwing it down hard. Rutherford with the pass right on the money. Kansas rolling. My mother, if she can come watch me play with stage four cancer, 
hurting, I can't even fathom in my mind what that pain felt like to her. And um, if she can come watch me do what I love to do, you know, surely I can go out each and every day and give it my all. Thomas Robinson has his ninth double-double of the season, and as you mentioned, Miles, has worked extensively with former Jayhawk great Danny Manning on those post moves. In talking with Thomas yesterday, he just said Coach Manning has been such a big influence on his game and in his life. They really spend a lot of time in his office just talking in general, but they do a lot of film work together. He's taught him how to play out of devil teams. Obviously, Danny Manning, a guy who got doubled all throughout his career. Really worked on patience in the post. There you see it right there with the pass fake. Read the defense right away before he made the move. Didn't go too quick. But Danny Manning's a guy that probably should be a head coach sooner rather than later, Mark. I mean, I know Jayhawk fans probably don't want to hear that, but this is a guy who's moving up in the coaching rankings. He can recruit. He can coach. He's a good teacher. He's a great person, an excellent leader. He's a winner. You know, all those superlatives go along with the name Danny Manning. Yeah, injuries hampered his NBA career, but no question, you're looking at one of the better collegiate players in the history of college basketball. And Danny Manning, Taylor misses the first. And I mean, what a bonus to be able to work with a guy who's one of the best college players ever, had an excellent NBA career, but like you said, cut short by injuries. And Manning has worked with the Morris twins, Cole Aldridge, Thomas Robinson, now Withy is developing. So obviously you know he does a great job with the individual, the individual stuff with the postman. Well, you saw the Thomas Robinson three. He had never attempted a three-point shot coming into this year in 66 career games. Nice back cut. Finished with the lay-in by Spencer Goodman from North Dakota. I love the pass on the back door by Allard. Perfectly delivered on the money. Robinson back in his familiar low post. The three he made, the first of his career, so he's one of two in three-point shooting, not only this year, but in his collegiate career. This is, this is a set call coming out here, Mark. They throw the ball ahead, dribble at, because they know Kansas is going to be in hard denial. Elijah Johnson out of position. Excellent job by Goodman to read it on the back door. Nice pass by Allard. Anderson, Allard, Goodwin, Schuler, and Archer on the floor for the fighting Sue, and Allard shoots a three. Robinson with the rebound. Not really, excuse me, not really Allard's game. 0 for 5 on the year coming into today. Probably needs to step into about 17 feet. Out here, Tharp. Robinson up top. Taylor defended by Aaron Anderson. Nice pass, Rutherford. Great feed, though, from Robinson. And there's that vision, reading the defense. That time he faced up when he saw the double team coming and delivers it right to the offside. Fourth assist for Robinson, who now the breakaway stuff. From all he's done today, a little bit anticlimactic on a breakaway, but still jams it for a 59-32 Kansas lead. A Schuler three a little long. And Mark, this is why I had Thomas Robinson on my preseason All-American team, just because of the energy, the things he can do rebounding-wise. He finishes around the basket, doesn't try to do too many things. Another three in and out. <laughs> well, hey, he was a 50% career three-point shooter before that attempt. <laughs> So that's a good look. Jumper knocked down by Aaron Anderson of the Fighting Sioux. The 21 points for Robinson, so he has 20 plus points in four of Kansas's last six games. The Fighting Sioux look winded now. I mean, that was just too easy. That was a made basket, and they get the ball out of bounds, throw a full court length, length of the court pass for an easy layup for Relaford. And you see mass substitutions about to come in for both squads. And Wilmer, Webb, and Mitchell all waiting to come back to North Dakota. Jumper knocked down by Aaron Anderson. Timeout called by North Dakota. With the Young and Tehan coming back 
for Kansas. We've been reviewing the 2011 calendar year for Kansas basketball, the ups and downs. We're up to October 14th with incoming freshman Ben McLemore, who you see there in the street clothes in the middle, and Jamari Taylor, a trailer, were ruled ineligible for this season. However, the silver lining for the Jayhawks is that just recently, as you see, trailer they have been cleared to practice and even though they're not going to play in games for the Jayhawks Miles how, how important is it just to have those guys practice to help improve your team well it's a huge bonus because now they get to learn the system offensively and defensively whereas in the fall they were not allowed to be coached by Bill Self or any of the staff they couldn't lift with their strength trainer they had to lift at a different time but not under her guidance so now, you know, they get to learn what Bill Self expects of his players on a daily basis. And then for the guys that are playing, yesterday as I got to watch Krasics, Ben McLemore, he would have been a factor on this team, but he was going head-to-head -head against Tyshawn Taylor, talking trash to him, going right at him. And he'll be a great addition to this team next year. Jamari Trail, obviously on the inside, he'll be a factor once he can play in the fall of 2012. Tharp alley -oop, the uh, lob to Withy. A nice defense by North Dakota by Wilmer and then Mitchell and then Huff at the other side and Kansas calls a timeout 30 second Jayhawk timeout and this this is going to be a teaching timeout mark Bill Self not happy where that last sequence went Well, Monday, ESPNU has a full day of college football. It starts at 10 a.m. Eastern with College Game Day built by the Home Depot. Live from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Then at 11 a.m. Eastern, get updates from all the day's bowl games on college football whip around. At noon Eastern, Case Keenum, his final game with number 19, Houston. They meet number 22, Penn State, in the Ticket City Bowl in Dallas. College football lives on ESPNU. And, Mark, we... We just noted about Macklemore and Trailer being able to learn the system. The Deer Tharp is going through those growing pains right now. That's why Self called timeout up 23, takes the pressure out, didn't like the possession before. When they threw the ball away in the lob, he didn't get back on defense. And Bill Self let him know about it during that timeout. Well, the hesitation by Huffton is shot blocked from behind by Wesley, but Wesley called for the foul by the sideline official. Duke Edsel, 11 18 to play in Lawrence. Jayhawks leading the Fighting Sioux with 11 18 to go. North Dakota, the Fighting Sioux. This is the last day you can officially use their mascot and nickname. They're dropping Fighting Sioux as of tomorrow and will just be the University of North Dakota. In 2005, the NCAA listed North Dakota among a group of schools with nicknames that were listed as hostile and offensive to Native Americans. North Dakota has been the Fighting Sioux since 1930, and to say this has been controversial in the state of North Dakota would be an understatement, but for the next three years, they will have no mascot. They do not expect to reveal a new one until January 1st of 2015. So they'll drop the Fighting Sioux part as of tomorrow officially. Yep, that's been a tough situation up there in North Dakota. There's been some legal battles over it. Petitions trying to be signed. And, and the whole issue may not be completely resolved as far as whether there'll be the fighting Sioux somewhere down the line or not. I think there's a certainly a contingent contingency that would like to see them continue with the fighting Sioux and those people are going to try to make their voices heard over the coming months. A for three hits the side of the backboard. Two on two. And then Anderson as he stopped in the lane is bumped and foul. Uh, they, called that, they called that on the floor. North Dakota can't catch a break. Anderson was definitely going up to shoot that basketball. He had stopped in the lane and tried to raise up, but Relaford grabbed his arm before he could get up. Webb throws it in deep to Mitchell. Hand it off to Troy Huff. 
Put up off the left side, rebounded by Relaford. He gives a look to Taylor. Comes down the opposite side. And the block underneath against North Dakota. Relaford, a guy who's really known more miles for his defense. Yeah, more of a role player on this team offensively. Not tremendously skilled, but it will play a couple different positions because of his size at 6'6", 210. Can play the four spot when they go small. Now averaging about eight points a game. I mean, he's in double figures in scoring today. I mean, Relaford, he shoots a good percentage, 52% from the field goals, but he's very selective on when he shoots the basketball and really takes open shots, doesn't try to force too much. A 69% foul shooter. He swishes the second. 64-39 Kansas. Under 11 minutes to play. Anderson. Wilbur screen. Now working on something different on the ball screens. Trapping the ball screens. Himself really using get utilizing game situations to do different things that he might prepare his team for in the Big 12. Webb misses a three. Robinson rebounds. Where's the point guard? Nobody came to get it. Johnson drifts to the wing in the corner. Relaford. Robinson off the floor taken by Wesley. Midway through this second half, 64-39 Kansas. Robinson. Five to shoot. Johnson the one to shoot it from three land. Rutherford rebounds. Float it up. Robinson the jam. That's just a lot from Elijah Johnson. Robinson does a great job of just hiding on that weak side when the penetration comes and ready to receive the lob pass. Tehan steals, but then his outlet knocked away by Huff. Returning to number 24, Brandon Reckman. Well, our Kansas 2011 year in review takes us to this month. We're not long ago, Bill Self's Jayhawks beat the second-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. Of course, Jared Solinger did not play for Ohio State, but Jayhawks held Ohio State to just 39% shooting from the field. And the Jayhawks have played a tough schedule already. Played Kentucky and Georgetown and UCLA out in Maui. Played Duke, played Ohio State. Really, four Georgetown will move into that top ten. Four top ten teams they face. Eleven the points for Johnson, who missed his first three field goal attempts that were all threes. Anderson, three. Aaron Anderson, who's been a better than 50% three-point shooter this year. Yeah, with Coach Jones, he, he set himself up nicely to go into that Big Sky Conference. Recruited well, the sophomore class of Anderson, Brecky, Huff, Huff, Shuler, and Love. Nice. Woo. Breakaway jam. <laughs> Troy Huff. Huff part of that five-man sophomore class for the Fighting Sioux. They'll have two years to play in that Big Sky and try to make an impact in that league. And it's a great recruiting tool for Coach Jones now. Knowing that you know guys can go into the NCAA tournament, which is all important in the recruiting process. I'd have to say that's the thing, isn't it? For yeah. players, do you want to play in the tournament? I want to get to the tournament. High rebound from Wesley after a miss by Huff. We've slipped under the eight-minute mark. Tehan feeds Robinson, defended by Brecky. Spins. Couldn't finish with the second attempt, he does. There again, we emphasize the patience in the post. He knows they're coming when he puts the ball down on the floor. He doesn't put it down right away. Then draws the double and splits him. Three missed by Webb from the corner. Robinson, 25 points, 16 rebounds. 
Going to the rim again and fouled by Brecky. 7-12 remaining in Lawrence. 70-44, Kansas. And a Shroff in studio coming up at the top of the hour. We get to see one of the nation's best players, Creighton's Doug McDermott, second in the NCAA in scoring. He's shooting a ridiculous 56% from downtown. Around the Big 12, K-State, Oklahoma, Iowa State, and Texas, all winners. Oak State falls to Virginia Tech in still one. And each thank you here at Lawrence, 7 12 to play, 70 44 Kansas, the 18th ranked team in the land, leading North Dakota. Let's take you back to the Sweet 16 in 97. That face hasn't changed much. <laughs> Miles Simon the, the, in Arizona. The weight has. <laughs> Mike Bibby led the Cats with 21. Miles added 17. Paul Pierce at 27 in the loss for Kansas. The French with the last desperation three that would have tied it had it gone. And Arizona wins at 85 82. <laughs> Arizona was the four seed. Kansas was the number one seed. And of course, Arizona went on to win the national championship. You got the ring for that one. Many people here in Jayhawk country say that that team for Kansas was the best that they saw under the Roy Williams era. They had four future first round NBA picks. Well, remember, they were 34 and 1 going into that game. The game was played in Birmingham, Alabama. One of the things that I remember the day of the game was. The headline in the newspaper was Kansas and the others. So it really was motivation for us that day. We obviously felt we obviously felt that, you know, we could play with Kansas. There you see Scott Pollard, who was in that game, Rafe LaFrance, Paul Pierce, Jacques Vaughn, some Kansas legend. But I mean, we had a nice squad ourselves with Mike Bibby, Michael Dickerson, Jason Terry. You know, you're talking about eight pros, eight NBA players playing in that game. So, I mean, it was a uh, it was obviously a great time for me, not so much for Jayhawk fans. Robinson off the missed free throw. Relaford was along for a moment, but then recovering Allard with the block. Taylor. Robinson. Still 14 on the shot clock. Right back to Robinson in the left block. I love the Kansas offense. The ball really never sticks in anyone's hands. There's no selfishness on this team. They pass it to the first open guy. Webb finds Allard. That's as good as Jordan Allard. 71-46 Jayhawks. This is the final game before conference play for Kansas. T hand a floater the two drop is. Good. Connor Tehan. Jayhawks have Kansas State here on Wednesday night in their conference opener. What a battle that will be. They're coming off winning the Diamond Head Classic. Beat Alabama, beat Alabama a couple weeks ago. Coach Frank Martin has his team playing well. Will Spradling, Rodney McGruder. Excellent job pick and pop there. Patrick Mitchell, a guy who's hit 10 threes in a game before against New Jersey Institute of Technology. Tehan. Left corner three, missed. Tehan, another opportunity, short. Tied up. So we'll keep it with Kansas. Josh Conference play begins for the Jayhawks on Wednesday, as I mentioned, against Kansas State. Then they play Oklahoma. Hey, we're talking about Baylor, Missouri, and Kansas. Lon Kruger has Oklahoma playing much better. Playing really well. Lost a uh, last two on the last second shot to Cincinnati. They only have two losses on the year. One to one to St. Louis. Excellent point guard in Sam Williams. Stephen Pledger, one of the best wings in the Pac-12. I mean, I'm sorry, the Big 12. A big showdown with Baylor for the Jayhawks in mid-January. They just try to make it eight consecutive regular season titles this season. Underneath Relaford and Long. Well, here Thomas Robinson gets the ball in the post, but look at his vision. He sees Tyshawn Taylor on the weak side right away. They're so unselfish. Thomas Robinson really gets the hockey assist on that one. He finds the weak side guy. Tyshawn Taylor drives and dishes. 
to Relaford, but it all started with Robinson in the post. Relaford completes the three-point play. He has 14 points. North Dakota, you mentioned their, their fourth and final transition here to Division One. They still have quite a few non-conference foes ahead, including a trip to New Mexico January 7th. Robinson tripped up and a foul on the fighting suit. And the connection there. Steve Alford. Yeah, is that Coach Jones? He coached under Steve Alford for seven years at Iowa. So Steve Alford maybe not doing him a favor by bringing him because New Mexico has a very nice squad with Drew Gordon, Kendall Williams, Tony Snell. But Coach Jones had to schedule 19 non-conference games this year. They've only played one home game in the last month. Mitchell fouls out. Finished with five points. Josh Jeff Thomas Robinson, career best marks in points, rebounds, and assists. He's so impressive. I got to work with Thomas Robinson at the LeBron James Skills Academy this summer, where he's going against guys like Michael Kidd Gilchrist, the Plumley brothers, Anthony Davis. And to me, he was probably the most impressive post guy there. He's just so physical, he has a high motor. In one of the big man drills, he actually dunked on Mason Plumley and knocked a couple of Mason Plumley's teeth out and one of them through his lip. That's how strong this young man is as Plumley was going to contest the dunk. Well, Robinson's previous career high was 26. He came against Long Beach State earlier in the month. He's 28 right now. Taylor from 15. Robinson fouled after the rebound. You see, he's just nonstop. He's relentless. He's played the most minutes of this game. He's done the most work by anybody. And he still took that, but he took that basketball out, runs the side pick and roll, then goes and gets the offensive rebound. That's 94 feet of work by Thomas Robinson. Robinson, 7 of 10 from the line today. Which is the first. Uh, look back at this. 2011 calendar year for the Jayhawks. December 11, Tyshawn Taylor underwent knee surgery and didn't miss a game. When they played their next game against Davidson, he was in the starting lineup on December 19th. Yeah, he actually tore his meniscus on a Monday in practice. Played two games on a torn meniscus against Long Beach State and Ohio State. Had surgery after Ohio State and then was back to play in that Davidson game, as you mentioned. Dribble was picked up by Schuler. Josh Gentry waiting, and now Mike Matheson, the 6'10 senior. North Dakota native, one of two North Dakota natives on the team for the fighting suit. Robinson, 21st rebound. And this is something Coach Self told us at practice today. He expects Robinson to be about 22 and 13 every game. Knocked away by Anderson. And it's Kansas Ball. When we come back with 3.49 left, 80-51 KU. Wichita State's Garrett Stutz had a double-double in Wednesday's win against Bradley. He'll lead the Shockers against 19th-ranked Creighton. That game coming up in a little more than 16 minutes here on ESPNU. Now let's get you back out to Lawrence. Thanks, Anish. Indeed, Dave Armstrong, who's calling that game, tweeting that the pressure's on Creighton, the ranked team at Wichita State. Blue Jays don't want to go to 0-2 in conference play. Yeah, they lost to Missouri State the other night. And the Missouri Valley's probably looking like they can get three or four teams in the NCAA tournament. Creighton led by Doug McDermott, one of the best players in the country. I believe he's tied for tied as the leading scorer. 
in the country, putting up numbers for his father, Greg. Dave Armstrong, Dave Kaplan have the call of that game from Wichita, not long after we are finished here in Lawrence. Robinson still in there for the Jayhawks. He has 21 rebounds. That's the most rebounds by a Kansas player since Nick Collison had 21 in a game April 7th of 2003. There is the coach's son who's having quite a year. Yeah, second in the NCAA. Excuse me, I thought he was tied, shooting the ball well from three, and he's a big guy out of Ames, Iowa. High school teammates with Harrison Barnes. Dad is the head coach. Nick Haugen has checked in for North Dakota as head coach Brian Jones getting some of his deeper bench players some time and that rattles around it in. Brian Jones certainly told us before this game, he said, hey, I think some of our kids need to recognize the history of this building and where they're playing today. Yeah, like they, you know, they roll up on Naismith Drive here. Obviously the, the father of basketball. But just the history of guys who have coached here, played here, Will Chamberlain, one of the more historic places in the country. Blocking foul, all against the fighting suit. Well, our last notation for the Jayhawks 2011 calendar year is the recent loss to Davidson at the Sprint Center in Kansas City, upset by Davidson, a team that Kansas barely got by to get to the Final Four in San Antonio the year they won the championship in 2008. Mitch Wilmer just fouled out for North Dakota. There's Mitch, who's from War Road, Minnesota. Right on Lake of the Woods near the Canadian border. As Robinson checks out to a rousing applause from the Jayhawk fans, 30 points. 21 rebounds, four assists, two steals, and a block today for Thomas Robinson. What an amazing performance by the All-American. Huff. Fighting through and fouled by Lindsay, or Lindsay. Andy Manning. Done such a great job tutoring <laughs> Thomas Robinson. I think he's showing him the stats, and Thomas Robinson can't believe that he that he did that. Unbelievable numbers by that young man. In 35 minutes. Well, no question, Kansas is going to lean heavily on Thomas Robinson, especially in conference play. Robinson and Taylor, say those, are the, those are the two important cocks for Kansas. Yeah, those guys have to play well. And then when you add in Elijah Johnson, can be that third score. If he can penetrate, get in the lane to open up his three point shot a little bit more. You have Withy down low, one of the best defenders in the country. And I think until you knock off the champ, I, I don't think you can overlook this Kansas team as still being one of the favorites. If not, in my book, they are the favorite to win the Big 12. Tyshawn Taylor just checked out 18 points for him with five assists in 31 minutes. Christian Garrett in there, along with Lindsey Tehan. Nico Roberts, jumper from the left side, missed. Roberts, who's the son of former St. John's head coach, Norm Roberts, who's tied closely to Bill Self in his coaching career. I like this North Dakota team. They won 19 games last year. Like I said, got to the college inside the tournament, got to play some postseason basketball. Coach Brian Jones doing an excellent job of building a program in North Dakota. Timeout called by North Dakota. Checking into their lineup is Doug Archer. A timeout to get some subs in for North Dakota. Doug Archer. What a great opportunity for guys like Stockdale, Archer, Antwi. Haugen to get to play at Fog Allen Fieldhouse. Three from Anderson. Off the hands of Archer and Kansas ball. Nico Roberts. Shoot him in. Just a little long with that three-point shot. 
One minute to go in Lawrence. 84-58 Kansas. And the Rock Chalk Jayhawk chant has begun at Allen Fieldhouse. At the line to shoot two. At the line, Jordan Judeman shooting two. Checking in for North Dakota at number 20, Josh Gentry. At number three, Vinny Anthony. Dakota. Juneman with the block from behind. Here comes Juneman. He has Roberts with him. Bounce pass for Roberts. A little long and took an extra skip. Stolen by Doug Archer. 19th ranked Creighton at Wichita State. From south of here in Wichita, Kansas. Coming up when we're finished in Lawrence in just 15 seconds left. So the Jayhawks will finish this 2011 calendar year going to 10 and 3 beginning conference play Wednesday against Kansas State North Dakota will drop to 5 and 8 and also drop their mascot the Fighting Sioux as of tomorrow so it's over in Lawrence and once again our final score Kansas wins it over North Dakota 84 to 58. For Miles Simon and our entire ESPNU crew, I'm Mark Neely. Coming up next on ESPNU, our college basketball coverage continues as 19th ranked Creighton faces Wichita State. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. The proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. That takes care of things from Lawrence. Happy New Year from Kansas. And in less than 10 minutes, we'll get to see one of the nation's best players, Creighton's Doug McDermott, second in the nation in scoring 56% from beyond the arc. We'll get you back out to Lawrence. We'll hear from Thomas Robinson. He's Dino Gaudio, former Wake Forest head coach. I'm Anish Shroff taking you up until Creighton and Wichita State. We'll get a chance to see Doug McDermott. Certainly, we saw a Kansas team that... After that loss to Davidson, they seem to be waking up, seem to be playing better, trending the right way, heading into Big 12 play. Well, Bill Sell said after the Davidson game, we came out of the locker room, we didn't have a lot of intensity or energy. He called a timeout early and got into his guys. Still, that wasn't enough against Davidson. But today, they played with energy, they oh. played hard. And Thomas Robinson, what a performance. And those of us that know him, Anish, last year, he was a back-to-basket post player, you know, limited skill, but I'll tell you what, he's really come a long, long way. Yeah, Thomas Robinson, another double-double. That seems to be his thing. We'll get you back out to Lawrence in just a little bit, but hey, equal time, right? Kansas, how about Kansas State? Kansas State taking on Howard, who Kansas absolutely demolished just a few days ago. Will Spradling at 13 points for the Wildcats, three of six from downtown. K-State 50 at the half. 50 to 18 is your halftime score. Howard scored 46 the entire game. <laughs> Kansas State will guard you now. They get into the ball. They really pressure you. Very good defensive team. Rodney Magruder with 14 points uh, leading the way for Kansas State. They had five players in double figures as we sort of get on the brink of conference play in the Big 12. We've seen Baylor look impressive at times. Uh, Kansas, two of their three losses, you got to realize, are to Kentucky and Duke. K-State is starting to play a little bit better. Our Missouri team is Missouri is one of the four on big uh, How do you size up the Big 12 right now? Well, it's, I think it's a little bit top-heavy, but those teams you mentioned, if Missouri, I'm a little concerned about their post presence which I'm not sure if they have but but that's a big thing for Missouri but I really like that 
Uh, I guess you could say Kansas, probably the most battle tested of the teams. They've certainly had the toughest non conference schedule. All right, time to get you back to Lawrence and Fog Allen Fieldhouse. Here's Mark Neely. And he's thanks with Thomas Robinson, who had career highs in numerous categories uh, points, rebounds. Where did the obsession come from today? You played like a man possessed. Um, you know, I think it just came from Coach Self. You know, um, you know, I've been getting double teamed a lot this year, and I've been trying to, you know, fight against the double team and score. And Coach Self just told me that, you know, if I start the game off patient and, and get my teammates shots, then, you know, eventually they'll have to just check me one on one. So anyway, that's what I did, and tonight it worked out for me. We know about your scoring, but what's unusual is that Miles Simon and I were talking at the top of the telecast that you may have to do some different things defensively today against North, North Dakota. Did you find that? Yeah, um, you know, I felt that I had the ability to, to check guards, you know, and, and with a team like North Dakota, when they have a fourth man that can stretch the floor, you know, we have to, uh, we have to switch a lot. So, you know, you know, I think I did a pretty, guard, pretty good job on, you know, switching on the guards, you know, still some work to do, but, you know, I, I think I did decent today. This team now heading into conference play. Do you feel like the Jayhawks have addressed the needs that you guys needed to address as you head into conference? Um, you know, we wanted to make a statement. You know, we wanted to finish our conference out strong, and I think we did that. You know, um, we start conference out against a good K-State team, you know, that's playing very good right now, and we just wanted to send a statement today that we ready. You mentioned that Tyshawn Taylor had more minutes coming into the season than everybody else combined. Do you feel comfortable now being one of, if not the man, in this Jayhawks offense? Yeah, definitely. That's something I knew that was going to happen. The minute, you know, I addressed, I was coming back to school last year. You know, I knew that, you know, my minutes were, were increasing tremendously, and I, you know, I trained all summer for that, and I, and I think I'm more than ready. Thanks so much, Thomas. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thomas Robinson, big, big game here in Lawrence. Anish, back to you. All right, thank you, Mark. 30 points, 21 rebounds for the Kansas Ford. Kentucky and Louisville. This was the New Year's Eve marquee. Pair of top five teams, in-state rivals. Russ Smith, career high 30. Louisville trailed by 15 in the first half. They would tie it at one point in the second half, but here, this is what Kentucky does so well. Defense leads to offense. The freshman connection, Davis to Teague to Kid Gilchrist. And then Anthony Davis on the receiving end of the alley-oop. Kentucky with a seven-point win. They've won 44 straight at home. Defending champion Connecticut taking on St. John's. Both teams without their head coach. Mike Dunlap in for Steve Lavin, who's recovering from prostate cancer surgery. George Blaney subbing in for Jim Calhoun, who's serving the second game of a three-game suspension. Andre Drummond, 16 points, 11 rebounds. Jeremy Lamb at 15. He got, they didn't miss 60% from the field. And 9 for 16 from threes for Connecticut. Iowa taking on Wisconsin. We take you out to Madison. Bo Ryan's teams never lose at home, or so it seems. They've lost once there already this season. That's usually the quota for the year. Josh Gasser inside for two. Badgers looking good at that point, but a credit Iowa, credit the freshman reserve, Aaron Smith. He was outstanding for Fran McCaffrey's Iowa Hawkeyes. You go into Wisconsin, went on the road in that building. Wisconsin, three for 28 from threes today, Anish. And White, 18.6 of seven, all off the bench. 16 of those coming in the second half. A Monday right here on ESPNU, it's College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. It comes your way at 10 a.m. Eastern, followed by College Football, whip around at 11. And then it's the Ticket City Bowl at noon. Houston and Penn State, Case Keenum's final collegiate game for the Houston Cougars. Coming up next here on ESPNU, it's Creighton and Wichita State. Uh, we saw Doug McDermott earlier. We're going to have a chance to see him in action tonight. Second in the nation in scoring. Lights out from downtown. What makes him so special? Well, he's a tough cover. You name your poison. You put a guard on him, he'll post. Big guy on him, he takes him outside. He's shooting 56% from threes. Coach's kid, too. So what does that mean? Basketball IQ, right? He's got that. Creighton and Wichita State coming your way now right here on The U.